Welcome back. IT hardware comes in many different types. Desktops and laptops are probably the first thing that spring to mind when you're thinking of computers. Most also know that smartphones and tablets are different forms of computers. Another familiar type of ICT hardware are games consoles. Here we've got Sony's PlayStation and Microsoft Xbox. If you're a little older, like I am, you might remember one of the earliest portable games consoles, the Nintendo Game Boy. What other types of hardware can you think of? Pause the video and jot down as many different types of hardware that you can think of. Once you're ready, restart the video to continue this lecture. Here are a few other types that I thought of. A smart TV is a TV that has additional functionality built in, such as catch-up or on-demand services, like Netflix. Or there's smart watches. Many of the fitness tracker devices, like I've got here, are included in this category. Or the Apple Watch is another popular device. The majority of cameras sold now are digital cameras. In fact, it's becoming difficult to get hold of film for a non-digital camera. These cameras store the pictures taken on a memory card, which can be moved to a computer so the photos can be copied, edited or printed. How about an ATM? In the UK, we call these cash machines. These are another example of ICT hardware. They normally have a computer built in, which works out deducting the cash from your account and then counting the notes to dispense to you. Have you used the car's GPS system to help you find a destination? Whether you use a vehicle's integrated unit or an aftermarket unit that you fix to the dashboard or windscreen, these are all examples of hardware. Are you watching this lecture at home using a fixed internet service? you're most likely using a router to connect to the internet. Strictly speaking, a router allows you to connect two networks together. It routes the information between the networks. The most common use for this is connecting other hardware to the internet. Did you come up with any others? Pause the video again and add a comment by adding a question. You'll find an option that says Browse Q&A near the bottom centre of the video window once it's paused. Let me know what other types of hardware you thought of. In terms of ICT, what do you think a peripheral is? Well, the definition of peripheral is related to or situated on the edge or periphery of something. So in terms of ICT, peripherals are devices related to computers. They normally add additional functionality to the computer. Let's take a look at this diagram of a computer again. If I ask you to point to the computer, what would you point to? Well, in this picture, the computer is the grey box here. The other things in this picture, monitor, keyboard and mouse, are peripherals. Strictly speaking, the computer doesn't need these to operate, but they add additional functionality by enabling somebody to interact with the computer. Another couple of types of peripheral that most people are familiar with is a printer, which allows you to get printed output from the computer, and scanners, which allow you to digitise or scan in documents or photos. What else can you think of that can be classified as a peripheral? Once again, pause the video and jot down what you can think of. Here are some others that I came up with. We have speakers, microphones, or combining the two, we have a headset. Well, there's memory sticks. These devices connect to a USB port. I'll show you what that is shortly. And allow you to copy information in the form of files, perhaps documents, photos, or video files, moving them to another computer. Okay, and if you thought of any others, Pause the video and add a comment in the question section to let me know. Let's now take a look at different types of I.O. ports. I.O. is short for input and output. And the connection that a given cable connects to is called a port. Here we have VGA. This is used to connect a display to a computer. Quite often, the plastic around the connection is blue. And even inside the port is often blue to help you identify it. They have three rows of pins and are about an inch or so wide. As with most of the connectors I'm showing here, the sides are slightly angled, meaning that the cable can only be connected the correct way up. A slightly newer type of connector for displays is DVI. This is about twice the width of a VGA connector. Quite often these are coloured white. They also have three rows of pins, but they also have a slightly wider bit on one side. With this slightly longer bit, and angled sides, they will only connect one way up. A third type of connector for monitors is called DisplayPort. Again, it's slightly newer than DVI, but nowhere near as popular as either of the last two. It has a much flatter connector 
and is much more difficult to see the pins. This has a slight angle on one side, meaning it can only go one way up. The last type of connector we'll look at for connecting monitors is the newest. It's used in a range of devices including TVs, set-top boxes and computers. It's HDMI. Normally these cables have HDMI stamped into the plastic somewhere. HDMI is the only cable I'm showing here that can also do audio. With each of the other cables you need to run a separate cable for the sound. This one a lot of people are familiar with. It's a USB cable and is used for connecting lots of different devices, particularly peripherals such as printers, keyboards, mice, scanners and many others. The cables used to charge smartphones will often have this on one end which connects to a charging plug or computer and the other end will have one of the connectors I'll show you next. Here we have mini USB, micro USB and USB-C. Mini USB is often used for digital cameras and camcorders. Micro USB is very common in a lot of phones or just about any piece of technology that needs charging. Even my mouse has one of these to allow me to charge it. USB-C is a newer connector and can be found on newer smartphones and even laptops. It allows faster charging than previous types of USB cable and as it's newer it has a few other benefits. The reason it's called USB-C is because it's the third standard of USB connector. USB-B, pictured here, is only used in a few devices now, such as printers. It's larger and more bulky than the others. The normal USB connector, or at least most people have seen it before, is USB-A. If you use Apple's iPhone, you're familiar with a different type of connector. The current iPhones use a lightning connector. They aren't exclusively used in iPhones, but it's certainly where they're found most often at the moment. As I mentioned a moment ago, most keyboards and mice now connect to a computer using USB. Before this was the case, we had a connector called PS2, which stands for Personal Connector 2. It's still quite common to find keyboards and mice in the workplace with this connector, although it's becoming quite difficult to buy new computers that still have this connector. It's generally cheaper to replace the keyboard and mouse with USB ones. The other common type of device that uses this connector are barcode readers, but again these are slowly being replaced with USB versions. Lastly we have audio connectors, including headphone connectors. This is a 3.5mm jack, most common for connecting speakers and headphones. In this picture on the left you'll notice lots of different coloured connectors. This is for a surround sound effect using multiple speakers. The important ones to look for are green, which is used for a standard pair of speakers or the front left and right in a surround sound setup. It can also be used for the headphones. The pink one is for connecting a microphone. In this lecture we have identified the term hardware and identified many different devices within this category, from different types of computer through to looking at different types of peripheral devices. We finished off by identifying common input output ports, or IO ports for short. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.